Hi and welcome to today's demo, uh, which is about the open source firewalls. And in this demo today, we will be reviewing PFSense, which is a firewall software uh, based on FreeBSD, which can be installed and deployed on the hardware, hardware appliances, and also on the virtual appliances as well. Uh, so PFSense uh, is uh, is a fork from Monoval. Monoval was uh, another firewall based on FreeBSD, which was uh, which is discontinued now. Uh, but PFSense has been uh, has been uh, in production and deployment for for a long time. And if we browse to the uh, the website the pfsense.org, uh, this is the website of the PFSense, and from here. We can just start uh, getting involved. You know, if we click getting started now, uh, provide some information about the uh, the PFSense. So PFSense uh, in the website they sell uh, the PFSense as a bundle with hardware. So you can uh, consider buying the uh, a bundle of the PFSense along with the with the hardware. You know, which comes on. Uh, different type of hardware for from small based on the Atom processors and the large ones based on the Xeon processors and uh, with 10 gig interfaces. Uh, but in this demo, we will just uh, see uh, we will we will be looking at how PFSense uh, can be loaded in our virtual environment and how we can use it for protecting the you know the virtual virtual machines and you know provide some kind of even micro segmentation uh, in our virtual environment. Uh, so when you click on the getting started, uh, uh, we can just start from the installation guide. Uh, the installation guide uh, provides some very good documentation here that you know it, it starts from the installation of the PNSense and also the configuration of each services you know for for, for PFSense. Uh, if we browse down here. Uh, uh, it talks about the virtual machines of so PFSense is supported on hypervisors like VMware, Hyper-V, KVM, uh, Proxmox, or Zen. Uh, which in, the, in this demo, uh, in general, I use Zen, so we will be trying it also on Zen uh, hypervisor. Uh, for downloading the PFSense, uh, it provides us this link, which is here. And from here, we can just uh, select a mirror and download the uh, the virtual the virtual appliance here. So it comes as an ISO file, and you just need to uh, load the ISO file inside your uh, your new virtual machine. You can create a new virtual machine and make it to boot from that particular ISO file. So for this demo, I have already uh, installed that virtual machine. So I have my Zen server and I have the open Zen manager uh, my PFSense is here so this is the virtual machine which has been uh, has already created and got the PFSense running uh, so in the beginning uh, after the installation you can continue the installation on the console for assigning the uh, the interfaces to the to the PFSense assigning the uh, initial IP address and after that you can get the uh, the web interface of the uh, of the PFSense. Let's have a look at our uh, drawing to see what exactly we are going to do, and then we continue from there. All right, so we have this very basic setup of a PFSense. Uh, so we have the PFSense virtual machine uh, running in our in our Zen environment, and everything here these are all inside the Zen. Uh, in PFSense, we will have a WAN interface uh, connected to the internet. So this WAN interface, it just receives an IP address from the DHCP and gets the default IP, uh, default gateway towards the router, which routes us back uh, outside to the internet. Uh, we are planning in our uh, in our demo to have uh, have a virtual machine and create uh, a new virtual internal network within the Zen. And we will connect, use that network to connect our uh, virtual machine one to the uh, to the PF sense. That's what uh, the plan is. Okay, and here are requirement that VM one needs to connect to outside via firewall. So that's the reason we are creating the PF sense. We are putting it in path. Uh, inline uh, internal network, internal virtual network should be created for uh, VM1. So we need to create this new uh, virtual network within the Zen 
and virtual the virtual firewall should allow vm1 to be able to communicate with outside and virtual firewall should block any traffic from outside to the vm1 so if there is any traffic initiated from outside going to the vm1 that traffic has to get blocked and uh but traffic which is being initiated from the vm1 to the outside that has to get uh, has to be allowed now to deploy uh this let's start by uh going and having uh, having a look at the web interface of the pfSense. so right now we have the pfSense running i have this interface also the van interface uh, connected to the pfSense, and we will continue looking at the virtual uh, looking at the web interface of the pfSense, and after that we will start creating this uh, uh the new virtual network we will assign the new interfaces to the pfSense and to the vm1 and we continue from there all right, so now I put my browser uh, towards the IP address of the, of the PFSense, which is 192.168.200.106. I have disabled the uh, uh, HTTPS, so I'm just connecting it through the, the standard HTTP. Now let's log into the PFSense and Okay, so after the login, you know, it just shows us some uh, some new dashboard information, information about the system. You know, it's based on Zen. Uh, the CPU, you know, it's got six core. You know, that's the that's the main processor in the machine, uh, AMD twenty four thirty five, and you know the the information like CPU utilization, memory utilization, and the other stuff. The memory, I think, is just uh, one gigabyte uh, that comes with. Uh, the standard yeah you can also increase that so yeah. uh, currently we got only one van interface which is up and we have this ip address on it uh if we look at the uh, the system we got some uh some menus here and you know we got uh we got routing you know we can create static routing you know on on pfsense i think it doesn't support uh uh routing protocols so but but we can create as much as we want you know the static route which should be enough uh it's got a set of wizard also which can help you for doing the you know standard configuration if you want to create do the netting and you know connect your uh internal network to the internet or create some kind of dmz network you know the setup tool this this wizard should be able to help it has the update manager uh, which can you know automatically update uh, update the system you know just on the fly um, got user management and you can create also different users uh, inside uh, interfaces is interesting so currently I got only uh, this van interface I have another interface which is uh, not used but you can assign these interfaces to uh, to different names and all the policies will be applied on these interface names which you are creating that's the that's the logic of the the pfsense uh there are others other interfaces you can create uh link aggregations uh with lacp you can create gri tunnels the q and q's or vlan interfaces as well so if you have a trunk interface it 802.1q uh, interface towards your to, uh, towards the switch you can create uh, multiple vlan interfaces here and have have them you know share the same physical interface and uh, use even different ip addresses uh, if you have a wi-fi card also you can use that wi-fi card uh, uh, so this applies actually on the physical uh, if, if you install the pfSense on a physical appliance if you got the wi-fi card uh, you can use the wireless option to create uh, i think you can make it like an access point or you can create you can connect it to, uh, to another wireless network you know to make it as a wireless client uh so this was the interfaces uh then individual also for each interface uh we have uh configuration so for example the van interface uh, is set for receiving the ip address from dhcp and you know the other uh configuration like the ipv6 or you can also start uh, by clicking on these two links, you know, it, it just blocks uh, any traffic coming from RFC 1918, you know, those private IP addresses, whatever traffic coming from that source, it will get blocked. So because on a VAN interface, we don't expect that, you know, traffic coming with this kind of IP addresses. However, in our lab, because the VAN interface is also, you know, connected to another internal network. So I have to uh, remove these uh, ticks here. Uh, the firewall 
uh, menu here so you can create uh, the aliases or the objects you know for example this one is my land you know it has uh, an, I an IP subnet you can create ports so let's say for example we can say uh, HTTP and we can assign port number port number 80 and we say it HTTP uh, so this will be saved oh, it cannot be a well known okay okay so let's say uh, SQL Server SQL Server Microsoft SQL Server which is let's say 1433 uh, SQL. so this will be saved so all the well-defined ports are already there uh, we just you know we can create alias for the other parts and you apply for any changes then we apply the configuration so it's it has a commit option always uh, the NAT configuration you can do uh, port forwarding we have one to one NAT and we got the outbound NAT also which is configured by default so the, the outbound NAT applies on the on the WAN interface so the traffic uh, coming to the uh, to the firewall and if it needs to get routed out over the WAN interface you know with this rule it will get NATed using the uh, using the IP address on the uh, on the WAN interface, the IP address which is there. Also, we got uh, other configuration. We can make it um, hybrid, or we can create some kind of manual uh, settings, or we can completely disable uh, the NAT. Uh, here is the main important thing of the firewall: the firewall rules. So, firewall rules uh, it applies for the interfaces that's how it works in pfSense so for example the van interface you know it got uh, it got the uh, allowed uh, any for for IPv4 so currently if everything is allowed uh, but for these interfaces which you see here uh, the way pfSense works so all the traffic entering to the van interface these are the rules that applies for traffic coming to that interface or all the traffic coming over through open vpn these are the firewall rules which we applied for that uh, for traffic outbound traffic we got this floating so floating is not only actually for uh, outbound traffic but uh, when you create a floating rule you can choose the direction so it's a direction it's inbound or outbound so for example if i need to uh, create a rule for pass all the traffic over the van interface you know, I choose the direction out IP and you know any protocol from any to any everything allowed apply so this created uh, a firewall rule uh, for outbound traffic towards uh, towards the van interface and I applied the changes here uh, other than that we got traffic shaping we got uh, uh, virtual IPs which you can use them for uh, for port forwarding uh, other than firewalling pfSense has other uh, features for example you know DHCP uh, DNS forwarding dynamic DNS and also it got the load balancer so the load balancer you can create uh, a pool of servers uh, here you know I have a small pool of web servers uh, you can choose uh, to do the load balancing or manual failover. So in manual failover, uh, whenever uh, the primary server fails, it starts sending the packet to the other server. Uh, and you choose the uh, the servers to be part of that, that pool, that particular pool. So it's not only a firewall only, but uh, it can do also load balancing. And you can create also the virtual, virtual server or virtual IP, the VIP IPs and you create the port number and that port will get uh, you can assign them to the specific uh, pool um, also you can do many things just like a standard normal uh, load balancer doesn't have very fancy features but uh, it can do just uh, standard load balancing on TCP UDP or you know even uh, other than that uh, we got PPPoE server, so you can create it also, uh, make it as a PPPoE server. Uh, we got VPNs, IPsec VPNs, L2TP VPNs, and also the Open VPN. So you can create Open VPN uh, service on uh, on PFSense for peer-to-peer, -peer 
or the remote access. So you can have remote access users using the OpenVPN client from Android tablets or from iOS or from any machine, Windows machine or anything connecting to your environment using the PFSense by doing a, a OpenVPN SSL VPN here. Um, so we got VPNs and the rest are uh, we got captive portal also the captive portal will will allow uh, will allow you to create some kind of captive portal you know on the interface so when a traffic comes to that interface like you know an HTTP traffic uh, the PFSense will be able to redirect that traffic to itself to a captive portal which you can create here and that captive portal you know with all of this configuration very flexible you can you can force the users to do uh, authentication you know using a radio server for mac address authentication you can register the mac addresses or you know just without any authentication uh, probably you can create uh, a basic page maybe that uh, you know you can ask for the for the email addresses um so this was about the standard you know the interface the interface looks pretty good uh, and yeah uh, we got all of the status of all the services uh service status and also diagnostics they can get uh, information about you know the tables or the flows on pf top for example we can get you know what, what's going on uh the traffic is being what, what traffic is being forwarded okay so Let's get back to our drawing and see what we are going to do. Okay, so once again, uh, we are going to uh, play with our Zen environment and we need to first create a virtual network and we will assign uh, an interface to our VM1 and an interface to the PFSense over this internal network. So let's get access to our Zen now. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is the, uh, the Zen server which we have and we will click on uh, the networks. So these are all the networks which are available uh, in, our, in our Zen. We will create a new virtual network. Uh, it's not external, it's an internal network and we call it, uh, let's call it internal network one. Uh, we'll create this network. Uh, the network is created now, okay, and we will assign a new interface to this new network for the PFSense and, our, and to the VM1. So let's start with PFSense. So I'm coming to the PFSense virtual machine here. Uh, go on the network. So currently we got three uh, interfaces connected to the virtual machine. We have only used one of them, which is this one, the VLAN 200. I click on add interface and uh, from here I will choose the internal network and click on add and here we go so we got a new interface connected to our pfSense and this is the MAC address of that uh, of that interface okay now let's go to our VM1 so here is the VM1 VM1 is running Ubuntu 1604 that's fine we go to the network. It already got an interface here, uh, but we will add another one. Uh, internal network add. Let's give it time. Okay, so this is also created. So we got two interfaces here. Uh, this one doesn't allow me to delete this interface for some reason, but uh, that's fine. When we when we connect to the VM one, we will disable the the first interface and we will only use the the other interface here. So now we have assigned the interfaces. Let's go to the uh, PFSense and we assign we, we assign that new interface which we have added uh, to a new uh, interface alias name. So the new interface, the MAC address is B509. Let's have a look. So from here we go to assignments, interface assignments in PFSense. Okay, so now we are back on the interface assignment page. And uh, let's assign, okay, we got this new interface here. This is a new one which we added, so B509. Uh, we will 
add this interface and uh, so this is gone on the LAN interface we can change this to let's call it internal and we will enable this interface as well uh, do we need IPv6 configuration we'll put a static IP as per our drawing here we should use this IP address 192.168.155.1 so let's put this IP address on our interface. Where is the IP configuration? Yeah, it's here. 192.168.155.1 slash 24. Okay, no gateways and we don't apply any of these. And we apply the changes. Okay, so the changes has been applied. Now we got a van interface and an internal interface. Both of them are here. Okay, so now let's enable DHCP server on this interface, but that's also something as per our requirement. So we go to service DHCP server. Uh, this is for the internal interface. So by default, it, it shows all the interfaces where you want to start the DHCP server so we call we enable the DHCP server it says this is the subnet and let's say a range so 192.168.155.1 to 192.168.155.150 extra uh, so this is the range and DNS server, let's say 4.2.2.4 and where is the gateway? Here we go. 192.168.155.1. Uh, um, we don't need to do anything other than that and we save this configuration. Okay, so now we got our internal network the DHCP server is running. Uh, let's go to our VM1 and see if we can get, we will assign that interface, it will bring up the interface and let's test if we can get the IPIs from the DHCP. So let's go to our Zen, we go to our VM1. So VM1 has got these two interfaces, uh, interface zero and interface one. Interface one is the new interface and let me get access to the console from here. So this machine is running Ubuntu. Okay, so we got, so this, this machine is running some uh, GUI also. Uh, so let's go to the network setting from GUI. So both, now we got two interfaces and both of them are off. Uh, so let's activate the Ethernet one, which I believe it should be for the new one. Uh, Ethernet one and we activate that. Okay, so it's trying it is connected. Let's see uh, what's going on. Okay, so it has, it got the IP address. Uh, yeah, it's a DHCP. It's a DHCP client and we got the IP address 192.165.100 and we got the exact same information. So our PFSense is providing the IP address from, the, from its DHCP and uh, now let's see if we can access, if we can browse anywhere. Uh, so the other interface is off. That's very clear. Uh, let's try. Okay, so now let's check if we got uh, the connectivity back. Uh, let's see if we can ping 4.2.2.4, which now we got the connectivity back. So now the traffic is passing from, from this host. If we go back our, to our drawing, the traffic is coming from our virtual machine one. It's coming to PFSense. PFSense has a rule to allow that traffic going out to the WAN interface. It nats the, the traffic and it sends it out. So we have the full control uh, using the PFSense. So in, you know, using, as, a, as you see, PFSense is very 
you know, flexible. You, you can deploy it in minutes, you know, within the network. It's just a virtual machine. You power it on and it works, you know, with a very low amount of memory or CPU requirement, you know, it can be deployed. So you can use PFSense for creating, you know, microservices, you know, a firewall for a bunch of virtual machine or a firewall for, for a specific service. For example, your, your you know, CRM cluster, uh, it can be isolated from the from the other applications. You know, it can be sit behind the PF Sense, and you can be deploy the PF Sense. You know, wherever it's required in in your virtualization environment, either it's a VMware, or Kemo, OpenStack, or you know something like that. Uh, so this was our demo about the uh, the virtual firewalls. I hope uh, it was helpful. And um, please, if you have any question, please. Uh, you can write it in the forum or you can direct, contact me directly. Thank you very much.